Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Impala Platinum stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Impala Platinum is a holding company that owns several mining entities that operate mines producing rhodium, platinum, palladium, gold, nickel, copper, and more. Its most significant mine is the Impala Mine in the Northwest Province of South Africa. The company also owns or has interest in the Two Rivers Mine and the Marula Mine in the South Africa Bushfeld Igneous Complex, and the Mimosa Mine in Zimplots in Zimbabwe, as well as the Impala Refining Services which smelts and refines metals for other companies. In December 2019, Impala Canada was formed from the acquisition of North American Palladium. Its number one producing metal is rhodium. 80% of rhodium is used to make catalytic converters for cars. Rhodium is combined with other materials such as platinum or palladium as part of an alloy. These alloys appear in furnace coils, aircraft engines, or electrodes for aircraft spark plugs. Its number two producing metal is palladium. 85% of palladium is used to make catalytic converters for cars and other car parts. It is also found in jewelry, dental work, and electronics. Its number three producing metal is platinum. Most platinum is used in catalytic converters for cars. It can also be found in dental work, electronics, and jet engine parts. The company is headquartered in South Africa and was founded in 1966. It started trading in 1982 and can be found on the pink sheets, Deutsche Börse, Johannesburg, and London Stock Exchange. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 9.4 billion market cap. They're trading at 11.60 a share and they have 813 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have negative free cash flow in 2018, way up to 2.4 billion in 2021. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's negative in 2018, up to over $3 billion in 2021. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that more than triples from $2.4 billion up to $8.7 billion. And look at their net profit margins, how high they are, 36%. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. So they converted 36% of their revenue into profit in 2021. That means 64% went towards expenses. This is the company's income statement. All their numbers are in South African Rand. One Rand equals seven US cents. I converted all the numbers to US dollars in my Excel file. The top line is the revenue, the sales, and you can see how that goes up a ton from 2018 to 2021. Here's a breakdown of their 2020 and 2021 revenue by metal. So their biggest is rhodium in 2021, then palladium, then platinum. They also sell nickel, gold, silver, and a lot of other metals. But you can see rhodium tripled from 2020. Palladium went up about 50% and platinum went up about 20%. The reason rhodium went up so much is not because they started producing more rhodium, it's the price of rhodium went up. You can see rhodium was really low in 2016, 17, 18, 19. But it started increasing in 2019 and increased a lot in 2020 but then a huge growth in 2021. That's why they made so much money with rhodium because they could sell it for more. It has come down a lot, but it's still trading a lot higher than it was before 2020. And there is a little uptick, so it has come back up from the bottom. So I don't know if it's gonna keep coming up or if it's gonna come back down. The revenue and profits of mining companies are so dependent on the price of the commodities it mines. You can see the price of palladium has also been increasing. Although it was really high in 2020, 2021, it was a little higher at one point, but it did come down in the beginning of 2021. 2021 was the best year for rhodium by far. And that's why their revenue in palladium went up 50%, because as you can see from this chart, palladium was really high in 2021. It is also starting to come down, but not as aggressively as rhodium is. Here's the price of platinum, which is pretty steady. It was highest in 2021, but not by that much. And it's starting to come down as well, but it's not coming down too much, just a little bit. 
If you're able to gauge the prices of these commodities, you can make a ton of money in mining companies or just investing in the commodity itself. Some people say the popularity of EV cars is the reason for the lower price of rhodium, palladium, and maybe platinum. About 80% of the usage of those three metals are used in catalytic converters of regular combustible engine cars. Catalytic converters aren't needed in EV cars. Although some rhodium, palladium, and platinum are needed in EV cars, but not as much as in regular cars. But EV cars are getting much more popular in 2021 than they were in 2018. And the prices of those metals peaked in 2021. And over 90% of cars made today are not EVs. And over 90% of the cars on the road are not EVs. It's going to take until 2035 or 36 just to equal the number of EVs as regular cars. In developed countries like the United States, Canada, the UK, Electric vehicles may be more common, but in developing countries, they're going to be less common because not only do you have to buy the EV and afford it, you need charging stations all over the place. And they're building those charging stations in developed countries like the US, where in developing countries, if only a small percentage of the population has an electric vehicle, they're not going to build charging stations every 10, 15 miles. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses to mine the different metals, the cost of labor, and the cost of materials, the cost of supplies, and the cost of machinery and equipment. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit, and that grew from $1.6 billion to $53 billion. Below that is their operating expenses, which are really low, so mostly it's in cost of revenue. And below that is their operating income, which is positive every year. They don't have much debt, so they only paid $178 million of interest on their debt. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is their best by far in 2021. It was negative in 2018. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they generate a ton of cash flow in 2021, 42 billion. And they do spend a good amount of money in CapEx, over 6 billion in 2021. In order to start the mining process at a location, you need to acquire the rights to that location. The cost to acquire the land is part of CapEx. Also, the cost of the machinery to break the rock is part of CapEx. And they have to buy expensive equipment to process the ore into precious metals. The cost of that equipment is put into CapEx also. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And free cash flow is the cash that's remaining for you, the investor. So the company can pay you a nice dividend, which they did, or they can buy back stock. They also did that. They bought back $1.8 billion. Last year, $1.2 billion. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. Or they can pay down debt which also helps you because that means they pay less interest on their debt, which gives them more money to pay you in dividends in the future. They reduced their debt load 13 billion in 2021. So this is what you wanna see when you invest in a company, lots of free cash flow, paying down debt, paying you a dividend. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 88 billion of equity. They raised 21 billion from selling their business and they profited 60 billion from running their business. When a company initially sells a stock, whether that's through an IPO or a capital raise in the future, that very first sale of the stock to the investor goes onto the balance sheet as cash and capital stock. After that first sale, then the stock is traded in a secondary market between investors. Those buys and sells have nothing to do with the company. The company doesn't benefit at all from any of that. Only the very first sale. And they profited $60 billion from running their business. So they took that $21 billion investment and gave you a return of $60 billion. And this is excluding dividend payments. Retain earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes minus all the dividends you paid. So probably be closer to $100 billion if you added back the dividends. They're doing a great job at running their business and giving you a good return on your investment. Let's look at the capital structure. $6 billion of equity, $100 million of debt. They're 99% equity, 1% debt. And they have a lot of cash on that balance sheet, nearly 1.6 billion. And their weighted average cost of capital is 9.4%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. 
We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 21 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $19 billion. We divide that by 813 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $12, so they're trading at a 51% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. The average analyst projects their revenue to decrease 0.8% in the future. I decrease their revenue 0.8% a year for the next four years. That's how I got their future revenues. To calculate their future free cash flows, I needed to see what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. I summed up these three free cash flow numbers. I divided by the sum of these three revenue numbers and that came out to 22%. So they convert 22% of their revenue to free cash flow on average. So I multiplied these four revenue numbers by 22%, and that's how I got their future free cash flows each year. Simply Wall Street is a lot higher than me. They're $57 a share. They're saying the stock is 80% undervalued. This is where the stock has been trading the last 12 months. The D is when they pay a dividend. If you got the stock down here, you were doing amazing because the stock went up a lot, plus you got a big dividend. But the stock has been coming down. The stock price movements move pretty close to the price of the underlying commodities. So it's really dependent on how those commodities perform. The stock was at its peak in April and May when the commodities were at their highest price. Now that they're coming down, the stock is also coming down. They sell a lot of commodities, so their stock price movement is a blend of all those commodities. They were paying a dividend in 2011, 12, and 13, but they stopped and brought it back in 2020. It was pretty small in 2020, but since they made so much money in 2021, they gave a really big dividend. It was nearly 13%, which is just unbelievable. But they could afford it. That's only 39% of their net income, 51% of their free cash flow. So their dividend is much higher than their industry. Their industry only pays 3%. Analysts are forecasting their dividend to grow to over 19% in the next three years. I wonder if this is a mistake. It seems a little too high. And the stock is a little volatile. The beta is 1.7, so the stock moves a little less than two times the market. It's gone up 37% in the past 52 weeks which is really good for commodity stocks since they pay a high dividend. If you add the dividend in, it's well over 50%. While the S&P went up only 28%, the 52-week low was 9, the high was 21, and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. Only about 200,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 813 million shares outstanding, 671 million are on float, and under 1% of the shares are held by institutions. Since their numbers are so high, analysts are projecting their revenue to decrease 1%, their net income to decrease 6%. They're not adding employees. They have the same amount of employees they did in 2015. But I don't know their employee count in 2021. This just goes to the end of 2020. If you put $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd only have $7,000 today. 10 years ago would have been a bad time to buy it, but if you bought it down here in like 2015 or 2018, you could have got it for around $1,000 and you could have sold for over $10,000 a few months ago. So you could have 10x your money. That's a tough thing about commodities. It's often about timing. Their biggest shareholder is public investment at 18%. This is the largest asset manager in Africa. Then BlackRock owns 6.5%. Carnation in 91. Both of these are also asset managers in Africa. And then Fidelity is fifth. Their price multiples don't get any better. A PE of 3.0. I don't know if I've seen a PE this good before. That's stock price over earnings per share. That means investors are paying $3 for $1 of earnings. So it's almost like you're taking no risk by investing in this company. Price to sales of 1.1, which is amazing also, and a really good price to book at 1.6. They have a really high return on invested capital, 58%. They can easily cover their interest payments. A great ROE at 54%. They provide amazing value to their investors and a high current ratio and quick ratio. They have 24 billion Rand of cash on their balance sheet and 22 billion of inventory. And the company is really well capitalized, 2.4 billion of free cash flow, 2.6 billion of working capital, and they only paid out 1.2 billion in dividend payments. So they have $3.8 billion of funding. 
So to summarize, I have them trading at a 51% discount. 2021 was a year for commodities. It's really hard to predict the future. I still think commodities will stay strong for a long time. I know there is some concern with certain commodities because there's a big push for EVs. Electric vehicles still use a lot of commodities. Maybe more of certain commodities like copper, but they also use palladium, platinum, and rhodium. And it's going to take decades to get close to fully electrified. So regular cars are going to be with us for the rest of our lifetime, I can guarantee that. You have to also consider this company is in South Africa, another reason severely undervalued. There are some risks with investing in companies in certain countries. There's a lot of governmental interference in South Africa and many other countries. So you have to take that into account when investing in this stock. But even with all that, the numbers just look amazing. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 10 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.